Sorry for the uh, bad mic quality last week. Um, I accidentally turned the volume up too loud on the um, the thingy-majig over there and didn't notice until it was far too late. So, um, sorry about that. It seems um, that... Uh Starting off the news this week, a UN report has concluded that if carbon emissions increase at the same rate they are now, the global temperature will warm over 3 degrees, with the current peak target being 1.5 degrees. Perhaps quite worryingly, this report does assume that all current carbon emission targets set by countries are met, such as the net zero by 2051 which the UK is set to aim for. The report states that because countries have not already acted fast enough, more drastic cuts now need to be made. Out of the G20, which is the 20 wealthiest countries in the world, only the UK, Italy, France and the EU have made net zero targets. The report finds that Australia, Brazil, Canada, Japan, the Republic of Korea, South Africa and the United States all need to take more action, and that while India, Russia and Turkey are all beating their current goals, the goals that they set for themselves were too low in the first place. It is believed that countries need to rapidly increase carbon decreasing policies or face the inevitability of breaking the Paris Climate Agreement by 2030. In other news, the Sumatran rhino has officially gone extinct in Malaysia, as the last one, a 25-year-old female called Iman, died on Saturday in Borneo. The final male Sumatran rhino died earlier this year, in May. Once a populous animal, it is now believed that there are fewer than 100 Sumatran rhinos still around in the wild around the rest of Asia. To begin this week's paleontology news, there has been a fascinating paper published in which a new skull belonging to the dinosaur Styracosaurus albatensis was described. The thing about this skull though, is that its frill is asymmetrical. The bony protrusions sticking out of the frill differ in number and size on either side, leading to some pretty significant inferences about morphological variability in these animals. As has been stated, if the skull had been found in two halves, then they could have resulted in two different species being named due to their differences, so this discovery shows that this variability must be taken into account for this genus. This has actually resulted in the genus Rubiosaurus being found to be synonymous with Styracosaurus. The study also finds that the evidence currently does not support the hypothesis that Centrosaurus directly evolved into Styracosaurus through anagenesis. Also in the news, a recent study has CT scanned fossils of the famous Abelisaurid Carnotaurus, allowing the first reconstructions of the brain and inner ear of this remarkable dinosaur to be made. The study finds that Abelisaurids overall have pretty similarly shaped brains and inner ears, though there are a few anatomical features that appear to be unique to South American members of the group. It also seems that Carnosaurus's sense of smell would have been important to this animal. The encephalization quotient, a measure of relative brain size, of Carnotaurus was also calculated, coming in at greater than dinosaurs such as Giganotosaurus and Allosaurus, but not reaching as high as Tyrannosaurids. Also this week, it's time to welcome another new species of Carcharodontosaur, Laos Venator Escarier. The fossil remains known for this new dinosaur are actually not too bad, though far from a complete skeleton, and were discovered in terrestrial sandstone rocks in Argentina. Laos Venator actually dates back to the Lower Cretaceous, meaning that this is the oldest Carcharodontosaur so far known from the Cretaceous, as well as the oldest record of these animals from South America. The fossils of this theropod were also found close to the remains of sauropods and an unidentified ornithopod. And finishing up this week, we've also been treated to the naming of a brand new genus and species of Asdarkid pterosaur. This animal comes from the Transylvanian Basin in Romania, and dates to the very end of the Cretaceous. It's been named Albadraco tharmisensis, and the actual fossils known for it comprise of two beak fragments and a neck vertebra. This animal joins the many other prehistoric creatures known to have been inhabiting Hateg Island, home of the famous dwarf dinosaurs and other Asdarkids such as Hatzigopteryx. The Albadraco individual known so far seems to have not been fully grown when it died, but would have been a 
medium sized Asdarkid when it grew to adult dimensions, confirming that Asdarkids of all size ranges were coexisting at this time and place. Though the possibility that this new species is actually a juvenile Hatzecopteryx is also discussed in the paper. Thank you very much for watching this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful week. We'll see you on Sunday.